Okay, um, we are slightly behind the schedule, so I'll try to be quick. Um, um, what I will try to present is the is the DPM rapid meta model. Um, and I think the slides are self-explanatory, so if I skip something or try to go fast over some topics, um, I hope you'll be able to read from slides what I was hoping to say. Um, besides, we'll be sharing a hopefully quite comprehensive um, documentation on that. Uh, that is part of the project uh, that you will be able to learn more and, and hopefully contribute. Um, before I start, just one point. We don't do DPM rapid because we are bored or uh, have nothing else to do. It's on the controller. There are sort of things to do. Uh, it's just that we know that the, the current DPM is working fine uh, for the models that we have. Um, it has, however, some um, inefficiencies in some areas. We can see that some features is missing. And with the, with the change that we see in the in the way data will be requested in the future, more granular or um, more transactional, it appeared that we need to react before this happens for the model for this, so that the change is more evolutionary rather than revolution at some point. So I know there are concerns about how this is going to be implemented. I think we have to be, um, we have to have it planned, a roadmap, but also a bit agile. Um, but uh, that's just um, a few words before I go into the, dive deep into the model, why we are doing this. Um, I think it is a useful initiative uh, that will benefit in the future. Um, the outline of the presentation basically it follows the components of the model, uh, so I will not discuss it now because I'll basically touch on all these all these aspects of the of the model in the overview on the next slide. So um, how the how the DPM rapid uh, meta model is built? Um, firstly, we have a set of of um, objects in the model that actually document the model itself. Uh, for example, we have a list of classes and their attributes to provide more information about what other um, features of the model they can use. But there is other there are other fixed things that we have in the model that will be um, govern uh, separately separately to the mod to the modeling of data themselves. So assuming that EBA, EOPA, and others will uh, will will follow this methodology, there is a certain things like list of data types or um, subdivision tabs in the in the legal references or list of languages operators that you can use in expressions. Some things that we would would like to or prefer to to maintain centrally so that uh, if there are any any missing features there, they will be introduced for everybody at the same time. Um, then we have a, a component um, which we which um, um, enables to to manage the concepts uh, in terms of identifying who is responsible for definition and maintenance for a given concept, but also the same for translations and references. So um, links to legal acts and ability to provide labels in different languages by different institutions. So this this is a part of this uh, that is covered by this concept layer. Layer. There is an entire historization with reference to the release publication date that I will, I will explain in a moment how it works. And then the, the model itself is broken down into, into the glossary. That is where, where we define the, the basic business terms that we, um, that we later use to describe information requirements. Um, there is the rendering packet, package, which is really important because this is how um, information requirements are currently defined by users. They provide um, in, the, in the ITSs and other regulations the tabular reviews. So we need to be able to resemble that. Uh, and it also kind of follows the process of modeling because this is the first stage to draft a table and then the businesses try to explain what is the table about by referring to glossary terms and exp ex extending this if missing. A packaging is important to, um, to organize uh, thematically by subjects, information requirements, and also ident identify what needs to be reported in the, in the given um, uh, reporting uh, regime and as a scenario. So we have modules so far, this, this has not changed. What has changed is that we have something which is called the variable that I will dive deeper a bit in a moment, uh, where we where we want to uniquely identify each piece of, of reportable data and also track it in time. So um, the data points, how we call them so right now, but this is a bit, bit broader than data points. Uh, this ability to be able to identify how, how what was the evolution of, of each of the of the value in time is, is I think very crucial for for both the um, the reporting entities to understand what they need to provide, but also later for, for the purpose of this, which is to use the data, right? We don't collect it only to have it. it, it it's only, it's, it's for, it's, uh, it's collected in order to be used. And this is, this is, um, in particular important for that. Um, there are a few technical things that are reused by this, um, 
by these um, components, uh, restrictions and context and their composition that I'll also try to explain a bit briefly. And there is an entire section that uh, currently was missing in the DPM or was not really addressed uh, comprehensively and well thought from the very beginning. It's about the data quality checks and transformation rules. I will not spend a lot of time on that because Antonio will be talking um, during the next session, but as it's part of the model, I included that here. So let's go one by one. So this is where we have the concepts part. So organizations, translations, uh, um, ability to, to, to provide legal, legal uh, reference to legal acts. So a concept, just like in the previous DPM, it, 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 DPM, it allows to identify who is the manage, who is the institution that manages the concept definition and is responsible for its, for its maintenance. Um, but not all concepts are like um, maintainable or translatable or referenceable. So what we have here is the ability uh, to express in the model itself on the on the concept class. What are the classes of concepts in the model, which basically reflect the entities of the model. But also what are dependencies between them? So for example, there are certain um, objects for which I can identify who is the administration agency, but for some of them, this is actually inherited. So if someone defines a table, obviously, or headers of this table and cells belong to the same owner. We don't expect that someone will be using someone else's table to modify cells. That, that's not the way it should work. We provide a mechanism to like copy tables and make sure they have a, um, but th this way they will have the separate owner. Otherwise there is a mess in the model. Um, but we will be able to relate this table. This is one of the mechanisms that we provide. Um, and the same for concept attributes. Um, this way we can identify which actual attributes of objects um, are, let's say, um, translatable or referenceable. Um, importantly, there is on a technical level, we consider using a global, uh, global unique IDs uh, like GUID or maybe some or identifiable. Uh, so that later it's easier to, to merge the models on the database level, but also there is discussion about API. This is like separate topics, but, uh, but with this component, um, this is something that will be, uh, will be part of partially at least supported. Um, then we have historization, which is one important thing that was not um, very well addressed in the current DPM. And uh, this is one of the main, um, uh, main topics that we discussed a lot. Uh, during definition of, of the DPM rapid. So uh, we have a concept of a release. So basically it's, it's a publication where we can identify uh, that from a given release until a given release something is actually considered to be reportable um, or, or valid. Um, this does not address internal uh, administration, but it allows, for example, or things which I'll discuss later, like to change the composition of certain things uh, or even move um, elements from one place to the other something that currently was not uh, possible at all. Um, there is another way of uh, versioning, which is to identify which elements are no longer active. So when we when we see there was a, an element that was simply buggy, or maybe we changed the way we want to express the model, we can deactivate some, 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 um, some elements in the model. And last but not least, um, some concepts which are versioned um, differently, or their life cycle is different comparing to the regular release plan. Uh, they can have from and to date. So assuming we, we publish, let's say, mid of year, uh, a new taxonomy, but modules are the reference that start from the end of this year, these, these uh, objects can, in addition to reference to a release, they also have to and from dates. Uh, the glossary is constructed in a way that um, the categories took over something which was currently a domain. Um, but it's also slightly changed. Importantly, as I said, with this ability to version, we are right now able to, for example, move an item or a member currently from one domain to the other. So we can we can version that. Um, and uh, from time to time, when we can revise the models and see if uh, the modeling that was defined, defined some, some time ago is still valid, we can actually re reorganize it, but keep the track of all these changes so that we can still uh, allow for time series and, and make and document all this all these changes. Um, subcategories is something that so far was hierarchies, but they are right now um, a flat list and can be arranged in, in hierarchical structures. And again, an important change: subcategories can change uh, their composition. So currently, when there was a, a hierarchy that we used in the table or in the metric, every time there was a change, we need to create a new hierarchy, um, and there was no real link between them. Um, currently, with the ability to assign items to categories with the start and end release date, we can actually modify the category itself, uh, saying that until some moment in time it was it had a different composition. 
uh, importantly, we don't have any more type domains uh, as in the previous TPM um, because this is um, taken over by the properties. Uh, there is a category for that, but the data type is, is identified on the property itself. And as you can see, uh, there are no metrics. So what happened is that everything um, right now um, that was a metric became a property um, and all dimensions became properties. Um, so we have, so far we had a, a quite difficult to distinguish what is actually a metric a property. Obviously a metric is more like a, what we observe or where the value is provided. But if you, if you, if you look at it conceptually, they are quite close in meaning. So we have right now properties which you can identify that they are qualitative and they will typically be metrics, uh, the things you that are being reported value, and qualitative, the one that provides some um, some perspective or characteristic of, of the observation. Um, properties can also change categories. Obviously, not these which are metrics, but the other ones um, can um, can be assigned to different different categories. And um, in order to be able to arrange properties in, uh, for example, uh, subcategories, uh, which is sometimes needed, or when you have a table with a drop down to pick up a uh, a type of code, which is a which is a property like ISIN or saddle or CUSIP, um, by having a counterpart item for each property, we are able to to provide this information without much duplication of the model. So every property will have its own its its own item. There are a few more complex things that we introduced to address some needs that were not currently covered by the VPM. So we have super categories. Uh, this is a situation when from time to time it is required to provide or combine in a single list elements which are not really sharing the, the same common semantical na nature. So in this case, as, as you can see, we have a common situation when countries are mixed with international organizations for some drop downs. So with subcategory, we, are, we will be able to, um, to link these two subcategories in one subcategory and then create a sub subcategory with, with, this, uh, with this composition. Another thing which is also which was also missing and um, may be useful is that um, many subcategories are related, especially though that those that define a, a, a superset of elements, and then we have uh, a subsets like uh, um, lines of business uh, when we have non-life life and then broken down by different types. Every time we change something in a major composition, we have to at least check if it also applies in the um, in the other cases. So uh, this relationship will be useful for management purposes. And then something that was long requested, um, ability to define compound items. So a compound item is an item that, um, that refers to a context, but this context has a composition of a set of property, property item pairs. Um, so far, when we had a, a, a situation when, when we knew that actual member like treasury shares, an item that uh, if you break it down, it actually contains information about three different properties, instrument type, that securities, issuer sector government, and original maturity under one year. Uh, that was not possible to reflect in the current DPM. Right now, we'll be able to, to define this, this, this information and maybe simplify the models because we'll no longer have to, first of all, decide if we want to have this, this the compound item or the, or the or the detailed representation. Um, and therefore, one, one characteristic will uh, will replace three, but this information will be in the model. So someone who later would like to gather all information about that securities, for example, they can go into the composition of, of compound items and, and, and dig that from the model. Uh, obviously, everything here, as you can see, is version. So we assume these things can change in time because of the change of the modeling, because of fixing of bugs. Um, so the start, start and end release, you will see, you will see everywhere. Uh, what are variables? This is something that was not present in the in the DPM. Uh, variables are used, as I said, to represent each different thing that filers need to report. So each value that they provide, it's it's a variable. And there are three types of variables. We have fact variables. So these are the regular observation, um, carrying amount equal 100 million. But some variables can take a role of a key. And in this case, they provide like more information for fact variables. Uh, typical situations are open tables where uh, there are columns which are facts and some columns which are keys to these facts um, to help uniquely identify these facts. Uh, but also there can be attribute variables. So um, information about the currency or um, or um, who is reporting could be could be addressed by an attribute variable. So it's not actually providing a, a distinction of the new variable, but it's more like describing the, the variable itself. Um, and the variables can be uh, arranged in different uh, relationships like between fact and key, between fact and attribute, but also if it turns out that we need 
for some reason to model two things differently, but we know it's the same thing. We can have equivalent uh, fact um, relationship knowing that although two things are represented differently in the model, they're, they're the same thing at the end. A uh, variable will be version because we know that things change in time due to bugs or, or uh, additions of new properties that need to be taken into account in the definition of certain, certain aspects. So um, variable version will at least point to a property but may also point to a context describing it in more details. I will show how this process uh, of derivation of that will look in a moment. It can also point to a restriction, which is uh, either a subcategory, so a dropdown list, or it could be a restriction of a value. So I can say that this is uh, um, this variable takes, uh, I, either it, is, it has to follow some regex or it is uh, between certain numbers. So with the, with the value and operators, we'll be able to define these kind of constraints already on the variable level. Um, how are these uh, variables um, derived? I mean, we don't expect users at, to, 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 to define it, go through each cell and define all the aspects. Uh, similarly to how the process looks right now, we will try to derive it from the rendering information, which we'll discuss in a moment. So um, fact variables will derive from table cells uh, based on the headers that they belong to and the tables they belong to, while key variables will be those um, table headers which don't have cells and therefore um, they, they provide the, the key. Um, this is a, a quite important change, uh, like um, comparing to the way it's, it's built right now, because um, uh, the, um, the way we model uh, open tables and uh, that are open um, from the rows perspective, but also open from the z-axis perspective, this will be unified right now, uh, which, is a, which is a great benefit of uh, of um, being totally um, independent from the rendering side. So if users de decide to rearrange the table, but still keep the same content, it will not impact uh, uh, the definition of the variables, which is, which is important. Uh, variables can be also assigned on the module level. So these are the, the things that are global for the entire report. Um, uh, the rendering has not changed much uh, in terms of the overall what it covers. So we still have tables, headers, and cells. Um, tables can be grouped and relate to one another, which I will explain in a moment. And the tables still refer to modules. So uh, one by one, um, as I explained, the, the variables are derived either from table cells or table headers, depending if there are key or, um, or fact variables. Um, there is an important thing because uh, currently we are able to address also rendering less models because uh, the, the table headers and cells can be skipped. In this way, in order to be able to identify a data set uh, with, with keys, um, it's possible to assign a key composition arranging a number of keys that belong to a, to a table. Um, and as I think uh, one of the important points that Carlos mentioned, um, in, in the model, whenever we have a tables that need to be normalized, we are able to express that. So we have table associations um, and header associations when we can identify between tables, which headers of one table are foreign keys to primary keys of other table. Um, another way of the relating table uh, is to um, provide table relationships. Um, there were a number of requirements that we started with when defining DPM Rapid over a hundred. And then we were going through, through these to identify if they are all addressed in the model. So one of the requirements was to be able to relate to two tables or more tables, um, like in case of IOPA when we have table variants. So um, there is a, a balance sheet, but it has a different variant for solo, for group, for branches. We all know it comes from the, from the same family. So um, there was a need to, to, to combine them together. And this is the one of the purposes of table relationship, but this, is, this will be extensible too. Um, the headers, um, just maybe focus on important things here. Um, as before, headers contain information about modeling. So when a modeler designs a table, they assign properties, restrictions, or context to these to these headers. Um, um, importantly, we have only three orientations right now or dispositions. So we have a header can be either row, column, or or sheet. We no longer have multiple x axes, multiple y axes. So when we have an open table, typically it will end up with columns only. So a cell can be assigned 
potentially only to one header, which was not possible in the current DPM. And um, there is one more thing for the versioning purposes. We have a table version header. So right now, when we change slightly the composition of the table, we don't have to create it as an entire table from scratch, but we can only identify these headers that actually change in time uh, between two versions rather than, as I said, uh, copying everything, even those things that have not changed. And we know tables are massive, so um, that will also help tracking the, the changes between tables in time. Um, yeah, I think this is already discussed, so to save time, I'll skip that. Um, this cell uh, results from headers. As I said, it may right now refer only to a single header, which was not possible before. We have a, a table cell version where we identify if cell is mandatory, excluded, et cetera, which may change between tables. So it's not only cell level, but cell version level. Um, and also cell version, uh, table version cell uh, typically results in the variable, but not necessarily. There may be situations when um, the, the, the intersection of row and column information is illogical, and therefore the variable is not assigned to a given um, table version cell, but this should be rare situations. Um, the packaging is quite similar to what we had so far, apart from the fact we don't have taxonomies anymore. Uh, so we have still framework, we have module, um, and then module is, is versioned um, with release, but also with format and two dates. Um, we have module level parameters, so global variables. And um, as before, uh, we are able to arrange groups and uh, tables and, and groups, so that they can be also nested. Uh, so that the credit risk and that we can go deeper into individual tables. And this composition of table groups um, referring to tables may also change in time. Um, last but not least, and again, very shortly, because Antonio will be discussing this in a moment, uh, the DPM refit currently contains also the, the operations part. Um, and this was designed in a way that is totally syntax neutral. So we have an abstract syntax tree with operands and operators, where we can basically fit in any, any rule. Um, and um, hopefully, We'll be able to use that to um, to express different syntaxes and different formats um, uh, in the uh, in the physical uh, in, in the actual implementations. So I think this part I will skip because Antonio will discuss it in detail. But if you want, you can refer to the slides, and that's it from me. <laughs>